He hello, it's Briggs here, and like always, welcome back to All Day Anime. And announcing the topic for today's video is my boy Moose Haddock, a friend and patron of the channel. Patreon link is down below. What's up everybody, I'm Moose, and today Briggs and I are going to be ranking the 10 commandments from weakest to strongest. We will be taking into consideration their commandment, power level, abilities, and personality. Thank you, Moose, for that awesome introduction and recommending I cover this video. Now, before I begin, I need to mention that this is not a versus video. This is a ranking order based on overall strength and each individual's characteristics. As we know, commandments don't work on other commandments, so try not to picture them fighting each other, but rather if they both had to fight a strong opponent, who would put up the best fight? But anyway, let's jump into it at number 10. Fraudrin, who has a base power level of 31,000. He can use the ability Full Size, which gives him more power and attack range, but as a negative, it drops attack speed and turns him into a bigger target. Fraudrin is most likely the weakest of the Ten Commandments as all the other commandments have a higher power level, excluding Galand without critical over. Now, the only thing that would make him a contender to be higher on this list is his ability, Soshin no Jutsu, a spell which allows Fraudrin to enter a person's body and use it as his own. While inhabiting a person's body, Fraudrin also gains access to their abilities. I think this ability has a lot of potential if he managed to steal someone like Merlin or Meliodas or Bond's body. However, mainly because he hasn't really tried to do so, I can't put him higher on the list. Like yes, Dreyfus is strong, but he doesn't exactly have the best abilities. Next up is Galen at number 9. Galen, Galand, I still don't know. And it may surprise you that I put him this low on the list, considering his physical prowess, despite not even having his full magic back. But it's that personality and that lust for battle that made him die so early in the anime. He recklessly rushed into a fight, even though he was in a weakened state. Despite this, he still managed to overpower Meliodas, Deanne, and Merlin. However, at the end of the day, he put himself at risk again by choosing to play the Galan game for fun and died at the hand of his own commandment. And mainly because of that recklessness, even though he is very strong physically, with a power level of 40,000 while using critical over, and a strong commandment that turns anyone who lies in his presence to stone, I'm going to have to put him at number 9 on the list. Next up on the list is Grey Road at number 8, who has a power level of 39,000, which is higher than Meliskula, Fraudrun, and Galen. She can also summon grey and red demons at will, which is powerful when attacking helpless humans, but when against strong foes, it's pretty worthless seeing as most commandments and sins can destroy that class of demon with no problem. Now that's what I would be saying if it wasn't for her commandment, pacifism, which causes anyone who kills in her presence to age rapidly and die. Because of this possible combo of summoning demons and then having them be killed which activates her commandment, and having a higher power level, I had to place her above Fraudrin and Galand. But there is logic as to why she is below the commandment at number 7, Meliskula, who has a power level just below Grey Road at 34,000. The reason I have her higher is mainly because of her abilities. She can revive the dead by amplifying their regrets and affection, pretty much reviving rage-filled zombies with the same abilities they had when they were alive. Simply watching her bring back a lane, we can see how powerful it is. If Bond wasn't immortal, he would be GG no re RIP right now. If used properly and on the right people, this ability is extremely powerful. On top of that, she can use Cocoon of Darkness, which is apparently so strong that not even a commandment can break it. And while you're in it, she takes your negative energy and gives it to her zombies. Yeah, let's call them zombies, and yeah, she gives them a power boost. Also, the Cocoon of Darkness works really well with her ability to steal souls, as seen when she stole both Escanor and Bond's soul. Now, both situations were rare cases, but that combo could likely even take out someone as strong as Meliodas. Well, I guess if he wasn't cursed. I wonder how that works. I'm going a little off topic. But yeah, Meliskula, in my opinion, is stronger than Grey Road and everyone else previously mentioned. But again, on top of everything, her commandment is very powerful as well. She has the commandment of faith, meaning any who show faithlessness in her presence will have their eyes set ablaze. But anyway, next on the list is Droll at number 6. And honestly, this one is pretty simple. He has a power level of 54,000, which is significantly higher than anyone else I previously mentioned. The closest being Galen's critical over at 40,000. Though technically Galen didn't restore himself to full strength yet, but regardless, like I mentioned before, Galen is mainly low on the list due to his personality. And everyone else's power I mentioned is even less than Galen's. But on top of that, he can use creation, just like Deanne, to completely control the Earth. But anyway, at number 5, we have Gloxenia, who has a power level of 50,000, which is slightly lower than the previous person, Droll, but still higher than everyone else listed so far. But the reason why he is stronger than Droll is because of his abilities. 
Being a fairy, he can levitate which gives you an advantage in battle, and just like King, he has the ability Disaster, which is incredibly overpowered. Disaster is capable of exercising complete control over life and death, by which the user can elevate or diminish the natural state of something. A slight scratch can develop into a severe wound, mild poisons become lethal toxins, and a small tumor could rapidly spread throughout the body. It is a fitting power for one who calls themselves the Fairy King, as it gives the user authority over nature, letting them grow and propagate the plants and trees as they see fit, or allowing them to wither and decay. On top of that, she has her Spirit Spear Basquius, which is similar to King Spear, has many forms and abilities, and makes both of them a much more competent fighter. I'm not going to go into detail for his Spirit Spear, because it would make this video much longer than it needs to be, but his Spear definitely increases his offensive and defensive abilities drastically. Next up at number 4 is Dorari, who has a power level of 52,000, which is 2,000 more than Gloxenia. Her ability Combo Star is extremely powerful, as long as she continues attacking without interruption. Each consecutive blow receives an additional 200,000 pounds of force. If her chain of attacks are interrupted, then it resets, and she has to restart her count once more. Along with her extreme speed, Combo Star can do serious damage, as seen when she did a significant amount of damage to Meliodas and overwhelmed him with her fighting ability. Compared to Gloxenia and others mentioned on the list, she seems one of the most competent in hand-to-hand -hand combat, and on top of that, if she's in a pinch, she can use Endura Transformation by sacrificing 6 of her 7 hearts. She can transform into the Beast of Destruction Endura, where she gains incredible power and strength, but in exchange loses her form and ability to reason. And just ahead of her in ranking is her partner in crime, Monspeed. And since Monspeed is my buddy Moose Haddock's favorite commandment, I'ma let him take it from here. Monspeed has a power level of 53,000, which is higher than every character mentioned so far, other than Droll, who has a power level of 54,000. On top of having an extremely high power level, he has a wide variety of powerful abilities, such as Trickstar, his innate ability that allows him to swap the locations of two objects, which at first doesn't seem very powerful, but being able to move and swap people at will is amazing. A good example of this is when Monsby uses the ability when Esterosa had him in a headlock, when in reality, he let it happen so he could swap positions with him and put him in the headlock. It has the potential to steal weapons with ease, as well as move someone into a position to be attacked. On top of that, he has a great mastery of Hellfire, aka Black Flames, that are so powerful they can nullify even an immortal's regeneration. He can use Goku Encho, which is a fireball in the shape of a large bird that can lock onto a target, making it more or less impossible to dodge. And finally, he can also use the Indra transformation, just like Derriere. Thank you, Briggs, for having me on your channel, and back to you with number two. And finally, at number two, we have Zeldris, whose highest recorded power level is 61,000, which is significantly higher than anyone else on the list so far. Just his power level alone could have earned him this spot on the list. But on top of that, he can use Desiree, where he summons a portal over his desired target, and releases a massive lightning bolt to strike them down, which is pretty OP if you ask me. He can also use Hellblaze, or Hellfire, similar to Mon, Speed, and other characters in the series. And because of his commandment, any who turn their back to him are treated as committing an act of treachery, and are cursed into serving the Demon King and by extension Zeldris himself who is acting as the Demon King's representative. Basically anyone who tries to run away or flee becomes his servant. And last, but definitely not least at number 1, the strongest commandment in my opinion, Esther Rosa, who has a power level of 60,000, which is higher than every other commandment other than Zeldris, but after Esther Rosa absorbed the commandment of truth, gained a power level of 88,000, but let's remove that from our thoughts from now and keep them all with one commandment each to make this a fair analysis. Even excluding that power up, I still believe him to be the strongest commandment. I'm gonna make a quick list of reasons. 1. He can use Hellblaze just like Zeldris and Mon's Beat. 2. He is very competent in physical combat and proficient with his Seven Swords Rebellion ability. 3. He can use Blackout to engulf pretty much any target in darkness, except for the sun. Don't forget to praise it down below. And number 4, the most important one, is his commandment of love, which makes anyone with hatred towards him unable to move and fight back. And let's face it, if you are fighting someone, you most likely have some level of hatred towards them, especially someone like Asterosa, who is a pretty shitty person. Only a handful of people can fight back like Escanor because he is so proud he bears no hatred, or Meliodas in Assault Mode where he basically has no emotions. But yeah, because of those reasons, especially his power level and commandment, I think Esterosa is the strongest commandment. 
This is, at the end of the day, my opinion. Feel free to give me your ranking list down below. Remember to show the channel some love by smashing that like button, subscribing, and hitting that notification bell. Also, all my links are down below. I started doing Twitch and recently opened up a Discord server. I also want to give a huge thank you to Moose Haddock for joining me on this video and to Simply Grouch for editing it for me. You guys are the real MVPs. But yeah, just like that, I will see you guys all next time, dudes. Shinpaku.